Team Poke Colors here, bringing you the latest in Pokemon. Guys, today we are back with yet another informational video. Um, I've noticed on the channel you guys have been really loving the informational videos we've done, which will be linked in the top right corner of the uh, of the eye up there if you guys want to watch some more informational videos, and will also be tagged in the description. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably are pretty new to Pokemon because a lot of people... You know, they have, they go through their bulk or their collection, they find an expensive card, and they want to know how to protect said card so that it does not get any more damage than it may be, or to keep it in its pristine mint condition. Now, one thing you guys can do for sure is go to your local Walmart, Target, GameStop might have them as well, and purchase these card sleeves. This is the first thing you should do. Um, don't mind the post-it note, but for visibility purposes, here it is. These are called penny sleeves. Um, they're roughly worth a penny. You can get about 100 of them for about a dollar and 50 cents, give or take. So you get a, a really big amount of these sleeves that you can sleeve your cards up in to keep them protected. And that's just the first step that you can do. So for example, if you have a decently rarer card that you want to sleeve up that has similar to the Salamence that has a uh, full hollow bleed throughout the whole card. I don't know if you guys can see that very well there. There it is. Check that out. It's a pretty nice card. Uh, in its current condition, it'll probably go for around 50 bucks. So I mean, hey, that's $50 that you could have later down the road. So what do you want to do? You want to go ahead and just sleeve that bad boy up by sliding him into the card sleeve. And now he is protected from dust for the most part, except for the top, as well as surface scratches that he may get being, you know, shuffled in with some other cards that they tend to get scratches on the hollow pretty easily if you have a bunch of stack of holographics. So that's one thing you can do. The next step is then to go and purchase top loaders. Uh, these are actually really hard to find now for some reason. People have been absolutely wiping the shelves off at Walmart from top loaders. So luckily for me, I have shown up at Walmart when the lady has been restocking. So I've been able to get some top loaders and I have more than plenty enough to save me some time for a while, but they come in a pack of 35. You can buy them for, I think $2 or maybe three, two or $3. They're not super expensive, but I mean, here they are. So they look like all stacked up and uh, all you gotta do Open up your top loader here, just like that. And then you can slide your valuable card into said top loader, just like that. And I have a post-it note for easy access to pull out the card, as well as pushing it back in without trying to bend the card getting it in there. So I highly recommend uh, getting some post-it notes. They sell them in packs, multicolored like this, for fairly cheap. And then you can put it on the back of the card sleeve, put the card in the card sleeve, and then put it all into the top loader. And then you can just pull it out whenever you want to look at it or move it around from a top loader to something else. So that's number two. Now, number three, obviously, comes with a grain of salt because I'm going to say number three is using a binder. Here is my binder filled with reverse rares and other cards. And as you guys can see, they are in a binder. Um, now the binder itself is fairly cheap and you do have to watch out with these three ring binders for this card sliding and hitting right here. So when you have them in this loosely tightened binder, they move around a lot. So if you're gonna use this binder, make sure you don't move it a lot. Or if you do move it, make sure that these pages are thicker than the standard uh, Ultra Pro regular pages that you can find at your local card store or Walmart and Target, etc. Because I've seen collections that I've come across where they'll have a base set Charizard chilling right here and it will have a huge dent right here just from it sliding and hitting that, that ring because that ring will damage the card. So if you are going to keep any valuable cards in there, make sure they are not on this left side here when it's facing this way, you want to keep the valuable cards to the right because they will not hit this binder ring. And then same thing goes for the other page. Just do a little flip, reverse it, and make sure that they are not in this slot on the next page. So keep your valuables in this chunk right here. 
that's facing upwards and you'll be good. Now, obviously you guys have seen my binder videos as well as binder reviews and everything. And these are not the be all end all binders. They are also very well designed binders that you can buy um, on Amazon. They're called, they're by Legion, the company Legion makes them and they are really good quality especially for more valuable cards that you want to keep in a binder for sure. I highly recommend those. So that's, that's binders for you. I mean, you can't really, you can't really get too complicated with binders. I mean, there's only a certain type of binder. Um, and then number three, or sorry, number four is one step away from a PSA card. Now this is a Japanese promo exclusive from the Neo series. And I purchased this off of eBay couple months ago it's been actually a long time that since i bought this i bought it for i think around 20 to 25 dollars maybe 15 i'm not sure but if you guys take a look at this this is a very thick plastic case with a tightly knit screw at the top as to protect the card now granted would i have liked this card to have a card sleeve on it before it was in this case because it will i mean these aren't perfect you can hear that that right there, that clicking noise is the card moving around inside the case, and that is not good for the card. As you can see on the back, you know, the edges aren't too bad, but that edge could probably be better given that it was not sleeved up properly. But this is by Ultra Pro, so I mean, it protects the card to an extent. I don't think they are waterproof or um, they're pretty dust proof, but you can almost open it up right there just like that without even undoing the screw so that's really not good for the card if you can slide it through the top like that so that's number four obviously i mean these i think you can buy for five dollars a piece at walmart or card stores and uh you know it's your best bet getting as close to a psa graded card that you can protection wise um but then that leads to number five which is just send your card to psa have them grade it, they will seal it tight. It's dust proof, waterproof, and I'm pretty sure moisture proof as well. So if you can't afford to send cards to PSA though, I do recommend you do get a nicer binder um, before you would go ahead and use one of these just because these are really expensive. And I feel like the side load binders prevent dust from coming in the top of the card sleeve, similar to how this card sleeve, you know, if, if a pound of dust fell on top of this card, you would get dust all the way to the bottom, most likely, just because, you know, as you can see, there is a slight gap on the top of the top loader there. Um, so, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I get it. You know, not everybody can send cards to PSA, but if you can, I highly re recommend doing that to protect your more expensive cards. Um, but if you're looking for short term, I would definitely go with the card sleeve and a top loader. And then possibly throwing them into a, you know, a tin where they cannot get dust through the top. You know, you can just set your top loaded cards like, like these guys. These are all top loaded cards from the uh, Expedition set that I have. They're just commons, a couple rares. If you don't want dust getting the top, just put them in a tin like that. And then there you go. Sealed from dust. That's one of the best ways to do it. Or you can use an ETB or... A collector's chest literally anything will work but that's that's my recommendations for you guys to protect your very expensive cards and also be on the lookout for more future videos because we do have roughly 14 to 15 informational videos that we have in the works so if you guys are interested in more pokemon learning tactics tricks tips do's and don'ts all kinds of that good stuff make sure you guys like this video subscribe let us know you guys enjoy this type of content and yeah, just to reiterate, first number step number one, penny sleeve, then top loader, then obviously, I'm not going to grab it again, but the binder, any binder will work. And then Ultra Pro case, if you're really that adamant about protecting it. Um, the only reason this isn't a case is because I bought it off of eBay and I have not yet opened it. But that's really the only reason I have this in here. And for display purposes, I mean, you can stand it up it looks kind of nice and then lastly sending your cards to psa to get graded that's you know that's the be all end all once you get a psa graded card you can't really go further from there so 
That is my top five ways to protect your guys' expensive Pokemon cards. Like I said before, if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let us know what you guys think about us doing a potential box break in the future. Uh, not sure on the set yet. Most likely will be Rebel Clash or if we can find an Elite Trainer box of some other sets from Sword and Shield and you guys are interested in buying some packs from us, we will ship the polls to you. So leave a comment on also what type of, you know, sets and cards and products you want us to open for you guys that you guys would be interested in buying packs out of. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Have a great day, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Peace.